how did you know about the person of Nagai and uh, what is that distract you most of this? I went to Japan in 1955 and uh, in Advent of 1956 I was in a, a storefront church in an area of 150,000 people there would, would not be more than 50 Catholics. Only 1% of the Japanese are ca uh, Christians, half Catholic, half Protestant. And in Advent, this doctor came. He was the Dean of Radiology in the university hospital nearby. And he said, we have many tuberculosis patients. And with tuberculosis, the, the spirit of the person has a lot to do whether they will be, get better or not. If they give up fighting, that's very bad. Can you... I'm not a Christian, but I know that Christians do nice things at Christmas. Could you come to the hospital and give some good news to the patients? So I consulted with the uh, Catholic group and they said, a movie has come out that will just be right for them about this famous doctor in the of Nagasaki. It's called The Bells of Nagasaki. And so... Seeing that movie, I first knew about Dr. Nagai. Why did you decide to write a book about his life? Well, back in the um, late 60s, a lot of bad things happened. Marcuse, the um, communist, wrote the book, uh, The One Dimension Man, calling on universities to rise up and uh, create a new world, destroy the old. Now, that message went to the university students four years after he wrote the book. We had 1968, the university strikes all around the world. And one of the sayings was, don't believe anyone over 60. They have nothing of value to tell us. So this new phase in the West of not obeying parents began. And that same year, the... Uh, Flower people, sex is good, spread it around, have multiple partners. And then thirdly, the next year, 1969, Woodstock, drugs are good, they make you happy. Now, there's a great loss of faith that I saw, and I wanted to try to respond to that problem. And at this stage, I knew a lot about Dr. Nagai, and I thought, this ex-atheist, who was a scientist, if I write his story, that might help some of these young people who went along with that, um, you don't take any notice of any, anyone over 30. And so that's really why I, I wrote the book. And then secondly, our mission was begun by a padre in the Australian army who was captured in Singapore. And he worked on the notorious burma Thailand Railroad. And where uh, about one half of the Australian prisoners died for lack of food, for beatings and the like, no medicine in the jungle. And I thought, now this is a beautiful story about a, a fine Japanese, he's a scientist, he writes poetry, uh, his wife is into the classical Japanese arts. Maybe I could get through to the young people and also to the Australians who still hated the Japanese because of the war, especially because of what happened to the prisoners of war. And as our mission was begun by an ex-prisoner of war, Padre Marsden, I thought, I'll try and tell his story to young people. What's changed in your life after the encounter with the person of Dr. Nagai? Well, I realised the importance of working for reconciliation because he was a great worker for peace. He was uh, badly injured in the bomb and he died six years later, but he became a writer about peace and reconciliation. He said to the Japanese people, don't blame the Americans, we all dropped the atom bomb. We bombed defenseless cities in China. Once war starts, the warring partners use the greatest weapons they have. And so I was, began to read books he wrote in Japanese, he read about, um, about 16 books in all and a number of smaller booklets. 
and um, as I read them, I was very moved by uh, the grandeur of, of his vision. This man who'd lost everything, including his wife and the atom bomb, bore no hatred for anyone. He was a very Franciscan spirit. He was like people liken him to St. Francis of Assisi, who once was a soldier. Dr. Guy was a soldier, was a doctor in China, and he became a man of peace like Francis of Assisi. Of all the facts and experience that Dr. Nagai lived in his life, which one is the one that you have closest to your heart? On the day the bomb fell, the hospital was, was completely wrecked. They went up the, the side of the mountain and set up a first aid post. And um, a doctor who was working with him said he kept looking up at the people coming from the, the city, looking for his wife. And about 4 p.m. he muttered, she's dead, she's dead, and he collapsed. He lost a lot of blood, he was wounded badly by flying glass. Now, he describes how the next day another doctor took his place so he could go and look for his wife, and he went into the destroyed uh, uh, suburb, it was a wooden suburb, and it took some time to find where his home was. And he found the home, he went, and in the kitchen there was a, a, a charred lump of bones and, and ash. And he couldn't believe it was his wife. And he said, I, I broke down and I howled like a child. And then as I gathered up the remains to take them to the cemetery, I saw her rosary. All the beads melted, but the steel cross and chain intact. And he said, it was a moment of grace. And I stopped crying, and I thank Christ that she could die holding the roses that she loved so much. And then, later on, uh, towards the end of November, he had taken many of the people from there out into the mountains where there was no radiation. But using a Geiger counter, he, could he found they could come back, and the bishop asked him to speak on behalf of the lay people. And he told them, uh, let us remember we are in a city where many martyrs died for Christ. Let us accept the death. God didn't will the A-bomb, but God came into the, the uh, suffering and brought us peace. And I remembered the word in the Old Testament for whole burnt offering, Hansai. And he said, I asked the people, let us offer our dead to the Lord, believing that God is still in control. And let us offer them as Hansai. And one man shouted out, that's blasphemous. Don't you try to dignify with cheap ferocity something that's utterly evil. And Dr. Nagai replied, replied quietly, yes, I understand that. I thought that when I found the remains of my wife, but we have the faith. And we know that our dead who are living the, the Gospels are in heaven. And so let us accept that. And uh, this faith that uh, Dr. Nagai was witnessing for all the people in Nagasaki, this uh, faith in the Rosary and in, in God, is what what changed the position of the entire city because there has been a bombing in Nagasaki, in Hiroshima. But the position of the people that live in the two cities is different. Can you tell more about this? Well, I went to, before I wrote the book, when I was writing, I went to Hiroshima on the 6th of August when their bomb fell and then to Nagasaki on the 9th of August. And I said to a group of journalists, uh, there's a different mood. I felt very different in Hiroshima than I felt in Nagasaki. And they said, we have uh, two words, Ikari no Hiroshima, angry Hiroshima, and Inori no Nagasaki, praying Nagasaki. And that's because of the influence of Dr. Nagai. Prayer was brought into the horror of Nagasaki, whereas um, Hiroshima, uh, felt great anger at the Americans, which is understandable, no doubt, but the thing was that Nagasaki 
firm peace in praying. One of the best characteristics of your book is the way you are emphasizing the Shintoist tradition and the Buddhist tradition in the Japanese culture, as well as uh, how Dr. Nagai is living that tradition in uh, relation with the Catholic tradition and how his wife, who is very traditional in the, in the Japanese, where do you see the point of contact between the Catholic tradition and the Japanese tradition? Well, when he was halfway through university, he received a telegram, come home immediately. His wife had collapsed with a stroke. When he got there, she could not talk, but she knew I was an atheist and that pained her. She had a deep Shinto faith. She couldn't speak, but she told me through her eyes, we can meet again. Now, I knew what she was saying, even though she didn't speak. That's why I became interested in belief. And I was amazed that the Frenchman uh, uh, Pascal was both a scientist and a deep believer. In an individualistic world, such as the one we are living in, that is not capable of caring for the other. Where do you see the example of Dr. Nagai to be relevant for our life now? Well, he was influenced by Buddhism too. Now, the most popular form of Buddhism is Amida Buddhism. And there's a very short prayer, shorter than the Hail Mary. They use beads to say it. Now, the ideograph, the Japanese ideograph, is a combination of now and heart not now on head. Uh, the West is too much in the head. The, the East would see more important in, in the heart. And so that Buddhist word, Nembutsu, writing the now, when you pray, you pray now. You don't worry about yesterday's failures or tomorrow's worries. You just are in the presence of God now and the heart. To me, that... that uh, spoke to me very much when I got to study Buddhism. Uh, the likeness of, uh, of much of Buddhist prayer with our prayer. Jesus said, give us today our daily room. The Buddhist prayer is now, this moment. I'm in the presence of this holy man in what they call the pure land, which we call heaven. And it's of the heart. Prayer is of the heart, not of the head. The head might be a good place for prayer to start, but a poor place for prayer to end up. In other words, prayer, real prayer ends up in love. Love of God and love of others. Thank you.